So Notion webhooks are finally here, a feature that I'm sure many of you have been waiting for for a long time now. Say goodbye to the awful workarounds like using Slack notifications, the OGs will know, or clicking a button only to end up on a black screen. Seriously, those workarounds were such a pain. We were basically getting punished by using Notion. I even switched to Airtable at one point just because Notion didn't have any instant triggers. But with this new webhook feature, everything changes. Now, there is a small catch though, and this could be an issue for some people, and that is that the webhook feature is not free. You have to be at least on the Notion Plus plan to use this new feature. However, if I'm being completely honest, that is a small price to pay for basically unlocking unlimited automation possibilities with Notion. But hey, that is just my opinion. So I'll be showing you two examples of how I use Notion webhooks in my day-to-day -day operations so that you can take some inspiration from me or just steal it straight up. I'll be leaving all the materials down below in the description and feel free to take whatever you need. So with that being said, let's get into this. So let's start with the first example. I'll be showing you guys how I use webhook notions to schedule and post content from Notion and distribute it to all of my social media platforms. As you can see, I'm here in my Notion table where I write and store all of my content. So I've got a bit of columns here. The first one is I'm having an internal ID, which is very useful for referencing a certain pieces of content. It's much better to call it, you know, post 38 or post 36 instead of calling it by the title, right? Or referencing it by the content itself. That can be a little bit tricky right, if you're working with collaborators or other team members. So there's the internal ID, which is very useful to have always. Then I have post date, which is just a date for the post to go live. Then I have title, I have content, I have the length of the content, just so that I know how long the content is. And this is also useful when posting to X, because if you post to X programmatically, you can only post content that is 280 characters long right? Not longer. Then I have the platforms themselves where I can pick, you know, platforms that I want to post to or exclude platforms that I don't want to post to, right? But in most cases, I have all platforms selected. Then I have data checker, which is basically a big if statement that is checking whether or not all of my data is properly filled out, right? It's checking all the columns and making sure that the date is filled out, title content is filled out, the post date is not in the past, right? And things like that. Then I have status, which is a pretty standard status is, right? I have drafting, which is pretty self-explanatory. The ready status I use for indicating that the post is ready, right? I finished drafting and it's ready for scheduling or it's ready for posting. And then I have like pretty intuitive statuses like scheduling, scheduled, posted, or canceled. Then I have a cron job ID, this will make sense more in a bit when I talk about how I schedule jobs using cron jobs. But right now, take it just as a, another ID, type of ID, and this is a job ID, right? This, my internal ID is a ID when it comes to the post itself. And the cron job ID is a ID of the job that will do the posting. You know, we can call it that way. Then I have notes if there's a success or if there's a error during the process, the automation will fill it out so that I know what to look, right? So that I have a quick information regarding what happened, what broke, or if it was successful. And then lastly, I have post links. Once the post will get distributed across my different platforms, it will automatically include all the links, right? So when I click, for instance, LinkedIn post, it will open the post itself on LinkedIn. And uh, this is an easy way to access the post themselves on each platform. Right, so this is the setup that I have on my Notion table. It's just a database of posts, essentially. And this is the first part. The first part is having a place where we can store all of our content that is easy to manage, easy to create, and easy to schedule, right? But this is just a database, right? You can use Google Excel, you can use ClickUp, you can use Monday.com. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you use, the most important part is that you know how to use it. It can store data in a nice way, right? You can visualize it pretty nicely and you're comfortable using the platform. Now, once we have the database set up, we need to talk about the automations, right? So 
In this example, to post and schedule content, I'm using two automations. The first automation only schedules the content, meaning that once I trigger this workflow or this scenario, this automation will only schedule the content, right? As you can see, for example, in this first post, this is in the past, but let's say that I will take some of my posts that I am working on currently. If the scheduled post is, let's say, 20th of December, then this first automation will only schedule the post, right? And when the time is due, meaning when it's already 20th of December, right, which is in four days, then it will do the actual posting, right? So the first automation that I'm showing right now is just only scheduling the post, right? It's not doing anything, it's just scheduling it. And then when it's time for the post to go live, I have a second automation that does the actual posting. And as you can see in this automation, you can see that I can post on Facebook, I can post on LinkedIn, on X, and on Instagram as well. Now, I have two automations and one database. And this whole system, basically, what it's doing is taking data from Notion and then schedules them, right? It schedules the posts so that when it's time for the post to go live, it will then automatically post it. Now, technically, you can just have one scenario and post it immediately when it, you know, when the uh, scenario is triggered. But for me, I just like to have more control over when the posts are going live, right? When the posts are being published. All right. So this is already set up. And the missing link that I need for it to work is how do I trigger, you know, this workflow, right? Now, to do that, we will use the Notion webhooks. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new button, right, in Notion. And we're going to edit the automation. And here is super simple. When a button is clicked, what I want to do is I want to send a webhook, which is a new feature. It's a very nice feature. So the first field that we need to fill out is the URL of the webhook, meaning once we press the button, where should the event be sent to, OK? And to do that in me.com or in Zapier, it's kind of the same thing. You need to find the webhook, which is the first node in the uh, workflow. And then you copy the address. And once you copy the address, you go back to the Notion and then you paste it in like that. And then here in the content section, you can select all the fields that you want to send out. For me, just to make it easy and simple, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to save it. I'm going to rename to schedule and that's it. So basically right now, if everything worked out correctly, if I press schedule, it will automatically trigger the first automation, which is just scheduling the post. And then once it's time for the post to go live, it will schedule automatically the second workflow, which will do the actual posting. Okay. So with this being said, let's see the whole flow in action, right? Let's see the Notion webhooks in action. So I'm going to go back into my Notion table and I'll finish filling out the content information, content data, right? So the data checker is saying platform is empty. So I'll just add the platforms that everything looks good and is saying that not ready for schedule yet. Status needs to be ready. Okay, I'm going to go ready. As you can see, the data checker is just making sure that all the data is correct so that I know or I can post with confidence. All right, so when I hit schedule, it will trigger the scheduling workflow. And what I should see is this data will change to scheduled. I will have a cron job ID, right? Because if we create a new schedule job, we should be able to have the ID of the job, right? And then I have a note that cron job was successfully created. So I'm going to hit it. And now, as you can see, it triggered automatically. Right, the status changed to scheduled. The Crunchup ID was filled out because a new Crunchup ID was created for this particular post. And I have a note saying that Crunchup was successfully created and scheduled for 20th of December. As we can see here, we scheduled it for the 20th of December. Right. As you can see, it ran through this branch, which is scheduling the Crunchup. And if I check my Crunchup, page, as you can see, I have this new cron job schedule, post ID 102, right, post ID 102, 
with the correct title, your business doesn't need more hours, it needs better systems. And then the next execution will be on Friday at 12 a.m. on the 20th of December. All right, as you can see, on the 20th of December. Yep, exactly. All right, so this means that once it's time for post to go live or once 20th of December uh, comes around, it will then trigger automatically this workflow, which will do the actual posting. So I'm thinking now maybe we should schedule it like earlier, right? Instead of on the 20th of December. What if I just reschedule it for like today at 3 p.m. and you know seven minutes so that you guys can see the posting in action, right? So what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to go back into my Notion and I'm just going to change the date to today at or 15 point eight right which is in three minutes okay i'm gonna go back to ready and what will happen is that once i reschedule the status will change to scheduled and this note should say that i rescheduled it okay so let's see i go schedule as you can see status changed to scheduled and the note is saying cron job was updated successfully for today which is 16th of december at 3 p.m and eight minutes which is in three minutes, right? So it's super simple, right? You can basically manage, right? And basically have an overview of all the content here in Notion while all the logic, all the hard work is done by the automation. So before it hits the you know, 3 p.m. and eight minute mark, well, let me just refresh this first. And as you can see, it changed from the 20th of December to the next execution is today at 3 p.m. and eight minutes which is in two minutes. So before the time comes around, let me talk about cron job real quick. All right. So as you can see in my first scenario, I'm using cron job to basically create and schedule my posts. And to do that, I use open source platform and that is cron job. It's a free tool that allows me to create these jobs that can trigger and or schedule activities that I want to have happened in the future. Right? I'm not sure if I'm clear enough, but basically in the context of post scheduling and post publishing, cron job is basically just scheduling the job, scheduling the post, and when it's time for post to go live, it will trigger this next automation that will do the posting itself. Okay. So cron job is just a tool for scheduling jobs, nothing more nothing less, right? It's super useful. And this allows me to really control when the post is going live, meaning that when certain actions happen, right? Technically, you can have just one automation, right? Not have these two workflows, but I just like the ability to control when the posts are going live, right? So the cron job is already created. The next execution should be in a minute. So let's see if it can do its job. Right. I'm going to watch with you guys. And if everything is going according to plan, this automation should get triggered anytime now. Right. Anytime now. Yep. As you can see, it's running. And it got posted to Facebook, LinkedIn, X, and now we are waiting for Instagram. Right. And as you can see here back in my Notion, I have the post links filled out. So if I open X, for instance, as you can see, this post was just posted on the time that we chose, and it's the exact content that was written here. Super simple. Right? If I open LinkedIn, it's the same thing, right? So that's basically it. That's how I use Notion webhooks to schedule and post my content, right? So in the second example, I'm here in my Notion table where I store all my ideas when it comes to video production, right? Basically, each block represents an idea, a video concept, work in progress, drafts, basically everything for my content production pipeline. And this is just storing the ideas and tracking progress, but the actual footage is actual content is stored on my Google Drive, which is here. Right. So what I used to do was for every single basically block, right, idea, 
I would have to manually create new Google folders, right? With the right ID, with the right name. And also in that Google folder, I would need to create a subfolder, raw footage, right? And uh, after I've created that, I would need to manually go back to Notion and paste the Google Drive link back to the card so that I have easy access to it, right? And this can add up, right? It's a very you know, small thing to automate, but this thing adds up. And, you know, if we can automate it, why not, right? So to do this, I have this very simple automation in me.com. Basically, we have four simple modules. The first one is basically webhook, which is a trigger for new events. And in our case, I want to trigger this workflow whenever I move a content block to the filming column, right? In other words, when I change the status to filming, I want to trigger this workflow, right? Because when we are about to film, I know for a fact that I'll be needing space in my Google folder so that I can store all my footage. Now, Whenever I change the status to filming, it will trigger the scenario. First thing it's gonna do is create a Google folder, right? With the correct ID, with the correct name. Then it's gonna create the subfolders, right, the right structure. And then it's gonna take the link of the new Google folder and just paste it in Notion, right? Now, how do we trigger that? Well, instead of using buttons, like in the previous example, we'll be using the board automations. In my case, I already have it, but just to show you, it's super simple. Just create add new automation and you add a trigger. So the trigger is obviously for my case, it's going to be when status is changed to filming. And then the do, which is the action, is going to be the same as the first example, which is send a webhook. And the process of setting it up is the same. In make.com or Zapier, you're just gonna get the URL of the webhook, right? And you're gonna paste it in and then just for making it easy we're gonna select everything and then we hit create right and once you create it it will have something like this okay so that was very simple and uh, let me just show you guys the little automation in action so i'm just going back to the videos as you can see we have eight folders and let's say that i want to start filming this next video idea which is facebook book ads builder so i'm going to move it to filming and this should trigger the automation. As you can see, it's running currently. It created the folder, created the subfolders, and then also pasted a link back. So as you can see, we have a new folder right here that we didn't have before. Vid42 Facebook Podcast Builder. We have the right subfolders. And then back in my Notion, I have the Google folder link for easy and quick access, as you can see. So basically that was it. Uh, basically that was the whole workflow and how I use Notion webhooks for the board automation. So if you couldn't already tell, this new feature from Notion is the bomb. I'll be definitely adding more logic and will be integrating Notion even more into my systems. But the best part for me is that I no longer feel like I'm forcing Notion into my systems anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? With this new webhook feature, Notion suddenly became a legit viable option for creating powerful automated systems, in my opinion. Now, as I already mentioned, all the materials like make.com blueprints are in the description below. So feel free to take whatever you need. And if you have any questions whatsoever, write it out in the comments and let's have a chat. And to wrap it up, if this video gave you at least a tiny bit of value, consider subscribing. I post about practical automations that save you a ton of time and make your life and business way easier. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one.